Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Pod. We have Devin Blaine with us. Devin is founder, president, and CEO at the Blaine Group. Uh, she's formerly an actress and a model. Uh, she's in Beverly Hills. We're going to talk about uh, PR uh, in Beverly Hills, California today. Uh, she's serving authors, nonprofits, and everyone in between. This podcast is brought to you by podpire.com. If you want to start or scale your own podcast, go to podpire.com. Devin, welcome to the podcast. Tell me a bit more about yourself and the Blaine Group. Oh, thank you, Charles. Uh, I've actually been doing this for a few decades since the acting and modeling career. So I, I think I've got it down pretty well. And our clients are actually international in scope. Uh, to wit, one of our clients is based in Australia. They're bringing their freeze-dried fruit products to the U.S. And the client texted me earlier, having just landed in Japan for a trade mission. Very cool. And what did you learn from your time as an actress before you actually started uh, the Blaine Group? As an actress, I also did a lot of modeling and I worked every trade show known to mankind. So other than new industries since then, I learned just enough about every industry to be relevant and perhaps get myself in trouble when I'm talking to a prospective client. Welding, been there. Recycled truck tires, did that too. Uh, technology, yes. So all over the board and it gave me a wonderful grab bag of knowledge. So what did you learn in these four uh, decades acting as the, the president of the company? What challenges did you go through and uh, what learnings came about to you? Uh, one of the important things that I learned, and this is something I tell many consultants, is that when you're the busiest, you need to market the most. Why is that? Because whatever project you're working on will come to a conclusion or that client will go away. And how are you going to pay the rent? You need to keep that pipeline full. And I know that ties in with what you do too, Charles. There you go. And your clients, uh, some of them are publicly traded companies. Why do they come see you? What problems do they have? Uh, the publicly traded companies that we've worked it with in the past, and we're not at this moment working with any company that's public, they need to sell their products. They need to communicate effectively and simultaneously with the financial markets in order to satisfy SEC regulations. So there are very specific ways to manage that communication. And as one company, Lyft, learned recently, you also have to carefully proofread your earnings releases. They had a decimal point problem, and it looked as though their earnings were even higher than the positive news they reported. That was a real oops moment for them. How do you get your new clients usually? Typically, it's by word of mouth. Uh, people refer us to people. We, a literary manager I work with, for example, referred me to an author client of his in Australia. That client is also a creative guy. He does uh, branding, marketing, design, and websites. And he's working with the freeze-dried fruit company and introduced us to them when they wanted to bring their products to the US. I was able to hook them up with a company that does the sales, distribution, warehousing, and logistics. And they didn't need us till they had that. Now they have all of it. And uh, nowadays with, uh, you know, like you started in doing stunt, uh, as a, a car driver, stunt car driver, uh, to 
business owner, aren't you bored running a business? Wasn't like your, your past life uh, more exciting? Um, I quit stunt car driving the day that we were up in the hills with, and we got prototype vehicles. They were the ones that did the beauty shots for magazine ads and then TV commercials. Then they came to us. We were doing the sales training films. And they were not in good shape at that point. And I was driving a station wagon down a winding mountain road, two-lane road. Producer, camera, cameraman were on a dolly doing close-ups and pullbacks from my hubcap. 60 miles an hour, directed by Walkie Talkie. When we finished that shoot, I learned that the production assistant had not closed off the road. Had anyone been going uphill or downhill, the entire shoot would have been wiped out. I was pretty fearless until that incident. So I had enough at that point. Uh, what I love about what I do is I get to learn a lot about a lot of different things. And it's fascinating. And I really watch the news and the news cycle and how that's relevant to our clients, how we can tie into it. And I really have fun doing that. I enjoy it. That's pretty cool. And in Beverly Hills, uh, what, what kind of clients come and see you? Do you have uh, actors? Do you have famous people? And uh, what challenges do they face? Why do they come and see you? Well, one of the most famous people we've worked with, uh, and there's been quite a few, is someone who you may not know his name, but he impacts everybody's life. And that's Marty Cooper, and he's the inventor of the cell phone. And I and we had the honor of representing the book he wrote. Uh, and what an amazing, lovely person he is, and what a great story. Uh, he literally developed the first cell phone in the three months. He was working for Motorola. They agreed that this should be done. And he had a three-month deadline because they had to present at an FTC conference. And if they had not gotten that go-ahead, if they had not been accepted, we would have a big battery in the trunk of our car and be tethered to using a phone in our car. Now, as you know, people are walking down the street on their phones all the time. And what problems did, did he had? Why did he come see your PR agency? He wanted to promote the book he wrote. So it wasn't necessarily a problem. It was, how do I get on radio and television talk shows, podcasts, covered in the press. Uh, the biggest hit we got for him was CBS Sunday Morning, which is a big get, doesn't happen too often. And their segments are usually two to five minutes. They give him seven and a half. That's pretty cool. Um, what are your top goals for this year? What are you aiming for? Uh, I'm aiming to get Gina's Table launched and selling well in the U.S. and other countries. Uh, that's the freeze-dried freeze fruit product line. And to work with an ongoing array of fabulous clients doing great work all over the world. Any points at which the company was failing and you didn't know what to do? Uh, we have had ups and downs. Uh, all companies do. I I have a someone who claims to be a friend who says, oh, everything always goes up. Well, 
<laughs> I don't think he's ever been in business because things don't always go up. There are ups and downs. Uh, and there are occasional hits when a client goes under or has a bad spell. And what I've learned to do is to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep going. If you're doing all the right things, it is going to work. Maybe you need to make a, a slight turn or do things a little bit differently. Um, the first time we had an, a really time-consuming six-month project uh, that I focused on too much, I realized you got to keep selling even when you're that busy. That That's why I give that advice because we had a scary couple of months until I filled the pipeline again. Love that. Yeah, that's always a recurring problem in business. Um, for for the last couple of years uh, since COVID, how have you pivoted your business model? Uh, my model never changed. And I had a very different attitude during COVID. Uh, the media were considered to be essential workers. And we work with media. So I figured by extension, we were essential workers too. My office never closed. We were open throughout the whole pandemic. And just in case anyone wanted to contest why I was on the street, I always had a press pass on my dashboard. Love and that. by the way, no one ever asked a question. I never got stopped, never questioned. How do you learn nowadays? Who do you uh, take advice from? Uh, I take advice or listen to what everyone has to say. Because you never know who's going to say something that's meaningful for whatever situation you're in. And you may not be talking about that situation. You may just hear something and say, oh, that relates to this. I should do this. So just be open, be attentive, listen, be receptive. Um, one of our clients made it a point to cultivate conversations with parking lot attendants, bus boys, everyone he met. And you just never know what you're going to learn and who you're going to learn it from. And how do you filter what's good from what's bad advice? Um, gut instinct. And I've learned that sometimes the advice from uh, a Fortune 500 company may not be relevant to an entrepreneurial one. I've made some mistakes in that genre, hired a consultant who was perfect for a large company because they could afford to make mistakes. I could not. Any other big mistakes like that of advice that you followed that wasn't a fit for you? Uh, not advice that I followed. What I have learned is to cut my losses early rather than later, whether that means downsizing an office or firing an employee. Or in some instances, a client. Are you still recruiting nowadays? Uh, I'm always recruiting because I always keep a file of who my next hire will be. Because I always know as we grow, I'll need someone else or someone decides to move on. Or these days, a lot of people leave Los Angeles. So what do I do then? I don't want to have a stopgap. And I'm going through that right now. I had a, a bookkeeper go on vacation to uh, Ethiopia, where her family's from. She hasn't come back. So you're talking to the Blend Group's bookkeeper right now until I fill that void. 
what softwares are you using or AIs uh, to help you systematize the business? Uh, we use a an a, an eblast system for distribution to the press. Uh, we use Microsoft 365 Office, like many people do, and our bookkeeping's on QuickBooks. Uh, some of my team have experimented with AI, but we're not actively using that right now. Where can people find out more about you, Devin? Uh, they can go to our website, Blaine, B-L-A-I-N-E, Group, Inc., I-N-C.com.